Hello stylers and welcome back to the Full Stack Ink channel for another video. I am the creator of Full Stack Ink, Nadia. So let's get right into it. Today we have this very fun and cute, easy pattern jumpsuit created. This is the McCall's pattern M7598. We're going to start off with this gorgeous fabric. This is a silky stretch chiffon fabric in a multi asterisk painting to me it looks like marble paint paint this been swirled together in marble and we're going to be using piece um view number d which is this drop crotch flowy um jumpsuit so first thing first i've already cut out all my pattern pieces as well as my fabric pieces just at the same time um you're going to be stitching the front and back together at the inner leg that is pieces um eight and nine then it's the front and back speeches this pattern only goes up to a size 22, so I did have to do quite a bit of grading. I've shown how to do that at another video, so I will leave that link up below how I grade up my fabrics, my patterns. Um, I did make a few minor mistakes, but I will go into that later. So we're going to pin together those pieces, pieces 9 and 8, and we're going to stitch along the inner leg, um, starting at the crotch seam, going the way down, and then on the side seam. So the crotch seam is going to be what is, this inner seam is going to be what becomes the crotch seam in your inner leg, and then the outer seam is going to become the side seam. Once you have done that, you're going to take one piece of these two pieces and you're going to want to put right side out just like if you was putting together a sleeve of a top and place it inside the other just like you do a sleeve of a top or you attach a skirt and a top together if you're making like a dress or a jumpsuit and you're going to stitch, stitch along that wide curve and that will become your back and front stitch you're going to start at there's a small hole at the very at the top of the back piece that will be your point on which to stop and make sure you give yourself at least one fourth inch seam allowance as well as make sure everything is lined up because this will become your face your seam in the front and back so you want to make sure this is as clean as smooth as possible So you're going to stitch all the way around from the front to top and then you're going to come back down towards, towards the curve and your notch that you left and you're going to stitch that one more time away from the seam allowance. So once you've done that, you're going to go to your back piece and make sure and Fold over your hem to about, about five eighths and do a narrow hem at the back opening, tapering down to get to the um, large um, circle that you have indicated. Pivot across the seam allowance so it's going to be a fat, a flat leg seam, um, and go up the other side. And then you're going to do the same type of narrow hem on the armhole edges. Make sure you press all of your seam stylers. That is the difference between a piece that look homemade and a piece that look professional. It is press seams. Isaac Mary Wright, he said it himself. So we're going to move on to our facing. So I've already cut out my facing here as well as I've already attached them to my pieces. This is piece number six. And I'm just putting in my marks and my notches, so make sure everything, you transfer all of your marks and your notches from your pattern piece. And I've already used some interfacing to um, press that to my fabric. Once you have done that, you are going to match up these two seams at the dot. Apologies, you're gonna match them up with the wrong size facing together going downwards and you're going to end at the dot that you transform over from your pattern piece and you're just going to do a simple stage stitch um, doing a back stitch at the start and end so 
And then of course you want to press this open, pressing your seams open. So make sure that it's flat so it does not get in the way or it creates unnecessary bulk in the finished look. So you're gonna take right sides facing each other and pin together the facing to the front. So this is piece six to piece eight. If you're the type of person that still writes your, um, the numbers of the pattern pieces on the fabric with the invisible beak. Um, you're gonna stitch from the neck edge, pivot, jack, go all the way downward and pivot at the small circle and come back up on the other side. So you can just see what I'm doing here. I'm just making sure everything lands flat because this will become your, your neckline. So you want to make sure everything is flat and straight and clean as possible because this will be the main focus of your jumpsuit. First of all, we're going to say hi to Grams. Grams making her first appearance. It's always by my side. Well, by her side. So anywho. And you're going to stitch this down. So you're gonna take after you do after you attach it, you're gonna fold it inside the fabric and do a top stitch over it. So, um, they asked to do a stay stitch once you're doing like a top stitching to this. I changed my press of foot to R on my brother's sewing machine. And then I changed the stitch as well, which is going to be like a slip stitch setting. So that when I sew everything down, that it's not easily seen on the outside. And this is just a secondary step that I did. You do not have to do this. You can definitely do a slip stitch by hand. Is that more comfortable to you? Or you don't even really have to do a slip stitch since all this will be covered with your trim anyway if you're using trim. If you're going to go with trim and ribbon, you definitely want to um, skip this step. But if you're not, you can just definitely do a simple stay stitch. It would be seen, but just do it in like kind of fun contrasting color or color that's going to easily blend and hide into your fabric of choice. So we're going to move on to piece 7 which is your back facing and which will become your casing for your ela um, elastic, I mean, which will become the casing for your trimming. So you're going to do a narrow hem along three sides of this piece, the side edge and the bottom round edge. Once you have done that, you are going to press these down firmly to make sure that they are flat and even. I'm getting more adjusted with uh, pressing down all of my seams when I'm done. I've struggled with this because I'm like, I got to do a whole nother step instead of continuing on to the next step. But pressing your seams really do make a difference. So with the right sides together, with the back piece of your jumpsuit, we're going to attach these right sides together with that bottom folded edge facing downward. So the unsold part is going to be the top half. And once you have those pinned, you are going to stitch along um, the side going down halfway and stitch across and go back up the other side. So you're not going to sew down this entire thing. You're going to sew down half. You're going to see why in a minute. So, I'm going to trim off the excess, the seam allowance, fold it in half, and then sew that side down. I did it twice and slowed it down for you a bit so you can see. By doing this, you're going to create a casing for you to insert your trim or ribbon so that you're able to attach and tie this thing so you can wear it. So. We're almost finished guys, um, halfway there. You wanna measure out the 
you want to measure out your ankle or where you would like this um, jumpsuit to sit. I pulled it up to my chin because I wanted to be a little short and not all the way down his pants. You're going to measure that out. Come, cut the lift that you need. Measure out how wide your elastic is. I use a half an inch. I'm sorry. This My elastic is an inch. Yes, sorry. My elastic is an inch. And I'm going to mark how wide to make my casing. And I'm going to pin that all the way around, take that to my sewing machine, and do a simple stay stitch around the circumference of my pants leg. Remember to leave a about a 2 inch opening gap at the start or end of this casing so that you are able to insert your elastic through. I'm going to take a safety pin, put that on the end of my elastic, and feed that through the casing making sure I hold on to the very end of that elastic. Probably using another safety pin to attach it to the fabric so it doesn't slip through. So you can feed the first half all the way through the casing. And then once you have that, you're gonna take those two pieces, those two ends. I did a simple zigzag stitch to connect the elastic together so it does not move to connect the ends together. I am going to close off the opening of the casing, so slipping my slipping my leg hole through so that it can attach. Now moving on to the trim. I didn't really go out and buy anything new trim, but I had this beautiful lavender like, like ribbon, and so it was actually wide. So I cut it in half. It was actually wider than this. I cut it in half, burnt off, burnt the edges so that it seals, and I'm going to use that and attach this along. You're going to attach this along the the neckline and the armholes. We're going to start at the armholes first. And I fold over the ends so that they can stay flat, but you do not want to sew this all the way up on the back half of your jumpsuit because you don't want to close off the, the casing that you have created. So they said you could do a simple uh, slip stitch towards the top. I just kind of stopped before I got to the casing and just folded it over and just left that um that part with the casing bare and exposed because you are so with this you're going to do a stay stitch down both sides of this ribbon or um, your trim try to get as close to the edge as possible going down one side going all the way down to the end of the of the ribbon where the armhole is doing a cross stitch and coming back up the other side try to get again to the very to the end of the ribbon as possible I came a little inwards so it's going to look like um just a pretty stitch after because I use white against this lilac so you can see it it's a really small detail that only I would notice or anyone notice that came close to me but I really do like how it turned out So with the remaining of your ribbon and trim, you're going to fold in half and then you're going to do with right sides together if you have right sides. You're going to fold in half um, with waist and stitch across the folded diagonally at the end. So you're going to do like a diagonal stitch at the very end of the folded side of your trim or ribbon. You're going to press that open so that it lays flat, cut off the... Um, an excess part of the trim. This is going to become like your v-neck detail. So you want to make sure that this is flat and clean as possible. With wrong side facing right side, so the stitch half of this should be facing the bottom, should be facing downwards to the right side of the fabric. You're going to pin this along your neckline and then you're going to stitch it. Doing the same thing you did with the armholes, um, doing a stitch, um, two stitches, one on each side of this ribbon and or trimming. And I zoomed in close so you guys can see. I'm going to start off on one half, work my way all the way down, do a cross stitch, and then come back up the other side. And because I use white instead of trying to find a fabric that, a thread that matched that purple, I'm going to get a nice little contrast that only I can see. 
And I'm going to take my time going around my v-neck again because I want to make this as clean as possible. So I close off the ends of my ribbon and then you're going to feed, taking a safety pin, you're going to feed your ribbon and trim through the cases that you created at the back of the neck. You're going to feed your trim and ribbon through the casing and create a nice little bow. So this is where I feel like I messed up. When grading my fabric, I did not come into account of how much room I would need to create the drop crotch effect of this jumpsuit as you can see from the pattern piece picture this is supposed to be a drop crotch effect mine sit and fit just like a regular jumpsuit i don't have a problem with that but when i remake this and i will be remaking these because this is something that is just so cute and fun and playful perfect for the warm weather perfect for while we're still um in covid 19 season although the stay at home order has lifted in some areas there is still not much you can do so you're in the house more often I really like how this feels and fit. The fabric is comfortable. Definitely want to make this in multiple colors and multiple prints. Definitely make it a little bit more baggy and loose because it does fit like a normal jumpsuit. Um, I did get a little overboard with the top of the jumpsuit making it big. I could have kept it at the measuring it was at because you can see it does kind of fall off of me and does kind of pucker out around my bust where it needs like darts. But you don't want that because this is a loose and flowy fun item perfect for the summer can be worn around the house if you're going out running errands having a quick lunch perfect everyday item all right stylists that is it thank you so much for watching i love you guys so so very much i hope you enjoyed this video please stay around and watch more check us check us out you can check me out and nadia the creator i will leave that li listed below or for style Inc. Hey, on instagram so, that being said, I love you guys so, so very much, but always remember to love yourself fully. Until next time.